pressure regulating devices in standpipe operations. Pressure regulating devices are devices installed in a standpipe and or sprinkler system designed to actively regulate outlet pressures in both static and flowing conditions. These devices could be found in standpipe systems anywhere, but they are most often found in high-rise buildings. Pressure reducing valves and pressure reducing devices are used to reduce, regulate, control, or restrict water pressure in order to limit standpipe system outlet pressure so that firefighters can safely and effectively operate hand lines for manual firefighting. NFPA standards 13 and 14, standards for the installation of sprinkler systems and standpipe and hose systems, require that at the standpipe outlet, the pressures must be regulated to those described in this chart. For 65 millimeter standpipe outlets, pressure must be a minimum of 100 PSI or 700 kPa and a maximum of 175 PSI or 1200 kPa. And for 44 millimeter outlets, the pressure must be a minimum of 65 PSI or 450 kPa and a maximum of 100 PSI or 700 kPa. Let's try to draw this out for you. Let's use the Calgary Courthouse as an example. It's a 26 story high rise building. It's a fairly typically sized high rise for Calgary. Let's say we have a fire on the 26th floor. The fire pump would activate and, using our pump math, it would pump to 1840 kPa. We would hook up to the standpipe, we'd get our 600 kPa or 6 bar at the outlet and put the fire out. Everything works as is designed. Now let's say we have a fire on the 5th floor. The fire pump would kick in and it would still pump to 1840 kPa. Because the pump doesn't adjust for where the fire is, it's set to always pump to the required pressure to achieve a minimum of 700 kPa at the most hydraulically remote standpipe outlet, which in this case is likely on the 26th floor. What that means is that on the 5th floor, the pressure at the outlet will be significantly higher than we need and possibly high enough to become unsafe. Our pump math tells us we need 960 kPa to reach the 5th floor with the proper pressure. Instead, the pump generates 1840 kPa, which results in 1480 kPa at the 5th floor outlet. That's 520 extra kPa. Which is why we have pressure reducing valves or pressure reducing devices. The valves on the standpipes receive this high pressure and reduce it down to between 700 and 1200 kPa. There are many types of these valves and we have most, if not all, in Calgary buildings. Let's take a look at a few of them. This valve is in the Hewlett Packard Tower. It's a standard valve but has an orifice plate installed inside the outlet to restrict the pressure. If needed, these can often be removed with a screwdriver, a set of channel locks, or, if those don't work, a halligan. This valve is located in the Vantage Point building. It's manufactured by Giacomini. It has internal components that regulate the pressure that cannot be removed. These valves are fire ground adjustable if you have the proper tools. This valve reduces the flowing pressure and the static pressure, so when the line is shut down it doesn't overpressurize the hose. This valve is in the Sasso building. It's a regular valve, but it has a device attached to the stem which limits how far it can be opened. This device can be removed with an Allen wrench or possibly a Halligan if needed. Once the device is removed, it can be fully opened and operates like a standard valve. This valve is located in the Bow Building. It's manufactured by Elkhart Brass and it's factory preset. This valve has a set of internal water chambers that work by using internal hydraulic controls to regulate and reduce pressure under both flowing and static conditions. And this valve is not fire ground adjustable. This valve is located in the Emerald Stone Condo Building. It is a pressure reducing valve designed to have an external limiting device installed, but it doesn't in this case, which in effect makes it a standard valve. 
These valves are in the Marriott Hotel. Again, the 65mm valve is a standard valve, but it has an orifice plate installed. The plate appears to be plastic or some sort of composite material, which appears like it would be easily removed with simple hand tools. The 44mm valve is made by Elkhart Brass and has an external limiting device which prevents it from being opened completely. Again, this can be defeated with an Allen wrench. This chart from Elkhart Brass shows that the static outlet pressure is always reduced by a set percentage of the inlet pressure. So, depending on the setting of the valve, it could be reduced by as much as 70%. This next chart shows a similar story, except that this one is while flowing at 500 gallons per minute, or 1900 liters per minute. While flowing, the pressures can be reduced by as much as 90% of the inlet pressure. So how does this affect us? If the fire pump kicks in and is set properly, and all of the PRVs were installed, set, and maintained properly, then it doesn't affect us. We likely won't know the difference. But if the fire pump kicks in and the valves are improperly set, we will probably get an incorrect pressure. If it's too much, then we gate it back a little. If it's too little pressure, then we adjust or defeat the device, or we increase the pump pressure with our fire department engine. But if the fire pump fails and the PRVs were installed and set properly, the pump operator will do the pump math according to CFD procedures. If the fire is near the top of the building, then pressure will likely be adequate. If the fire is lower in the building, then the pressure will not be high enough. Because of the pressure reducing valves, we have to have the pump operator correct their calculation to pump to the pressure required to reach the top floor, or the interior crews can adjust or defeat the device. How do we identify pressure reducing valves and pressure reducing devices? Many of the simple valves with external devices are very obvious, having some sort of pin or clip system which prevents the valve from being opened fully. These are simple to adjust and defeat either by hand or with simple hand tools. This valve has a pin that must be removed with an Allen wrench. This valve has a limiting clip that can be removed by hand, as you can see in this second photo. Many of the fire ground adjustable valves are significantly larger than a standard valve and often are marked with instructions for how to adjust the valve. This is a Giacomini valve and can be adjusted using a rod that fits in the hole on the adjusting collar, which measures approximately 3 eighths of an inch. Many of the factory preset valves are only slightly larger than a standard hose valve, but have a larger body near the stem. These ones also tend to have a non-threaded stem when you open up the port cap and look inside the valve. This valve, made by Elkhart Brass, must have the correct pressure pumped into it in order to achieve the correct discharge pressure. It cannot be defeated. Note the smooth stem inside the valve. On the valves with orifice plates, they look no different than a normal valve, except for the presence of the orifice plate at the discharge port. This requires that you open the cap and look for the plate inside. This plate appears to be plastic or composite material and looks like a friction fit. This next one looks like it's welded in place. Both of these should be easily removed with a set of channel locks or a halogen bar. If our fire department connection is unusable for any reason, then our plan B is to flow into the first floor standpipe connection. But if the building has pressure reducing valves, there's a good chance that won't work. If it's a simple device that we can remove, then we remove it. But if it's an automatic, factory set, or fire ground adjustable valve, then they act as a backflow preventer, and they will not allow water to enter the standpipe. So then, we start looking for a test header to pump into. You'll need to open some valves in the sprinkler or fire pump room to allow water to flow from the test header back into the standpipe. Now every building is a little bit different, so you'll have to search for it, if it exists. Good luck.